And so knowing that these leaders are their, you know, their ROI is completely measured by the revenue growth that they're achieving. What, you know, what advice do you have for our listeners today on, on the things that they should be looking at from a measurability standpoint, or at least those items that we know they can hit their revenue goal by to set the entire, you know, all those teams, sales and marketing up to succeed? Yes. And it's a crazy environment that we're working with, right? And you're absolutely right. Revenue leaders are ultimately measured on their ability to hit a revenue goal. Did we right. you know, grow the business in the way that we said we would? But in today's environment, 100% of the revenue leaders we talk to have at best a 50% degree of confidence in actually achieving their revenue goal. And that's that's a tough spot to be in. You combine that with things like 69% of reps last year didn't hit their number, right? Um, conversion rates are going down. Sales cycles are extending. Uh, you have more buyers in your buying committee. Like these are all, it's like the sky is falling, right? All of these challenges that these teams that these teams are faced with. Um, and I think when we go through the planning process, we don't consider not only those challenges, but our historical performance and how... Uh, how long it takes, how much it costs to actually acquire those customers. So we create these revenue goals and these revenue plans that aren't based in reality. Um, well, and I think especially if it's a brand new product to market, so if it's a new entry or versus if it's, you know, a, a you know, let's say it's a disruptor, a brand new market to entry. I mean, typically you're going to want several months, if not years of changing habits, at least seeding information to the audience in order for them, in order for a go-to market strategy to be successful. So do you think that people are just starting the GTMs far too late and expecting wonderful things to happen? In other words, are they not seeding the market enough in advance for success and the revenue goal to be met? Um, yes. Um, and I think it's because when we've traditionally planned, we focused on the outcome, right? right. So we've exactly. looked at we've looked at a revenue projection, right? We don't consider those other elements that says, okay, I know my sales cycle is in an enterprise business, I may have a 180 to 250 day sales cycle, right? That's a very long time. I better be generating demand and opportunity for my team, you know, six months prior to me even starting 2024. So having that type of visibility will tell you this is when we need to start to begin that go-to-market activity, and that's what you know. It, when we when we have conversations with like we were at Pavilion CEO Summit earlier this year, and Marlin Equity Group and um, Insight Partners and other VCs were there talking about what they're looking for in the context of a good investment where they're allocating their dollars. And one of those one of those elements is product market fit. So some of the things that you were talking about is definitely takes time to achieve that product market fit. But they're looking for a minimum, if you if you haven't achieved product market fit yet, do you have leading indicators that mm -hmm. will tell you that I'm on my way to product market fit, right? I have usage statistics from my products. I have, you know, consistent login from the users that are there. I've got, you know, strong, ultimately they want to see strong NRR, net, um, net revenue retention, upwards of 100%. But if I'm in my early days, I might be able to get away with 90, 95% in RR as well.